is that after people perform musically at church, there's the tendency that a lot of people have to clap. We don't normally do that in church because church musicians, for them, this is an offering of their skill and their gift to God. So we don't normally offer a round of applause in that case. I, however, am not a church musician. So thank you, Jim. They also don't applaud after sermons, but for a completely different reason. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Glad to have you here worshiping with us at St. Stephen's. The air conditioning has just kicked on, and when I'm not talking, the hot air level in the room goes down. So please stand and join in singing our opening hymn, Hymn 717. Son and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
be with you. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, in whose name the founders of this country won liberty for themselves and for us, and lit the torch of freedom for nations then unborn. Grant that we and all the people of this land may have grace to maintain our liberties in righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, rejoice with her in joy. All you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious bosom. For thus says the Lord, I will extend prosperity to her like a river and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream and you shall nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Your bodies shall flourish like the grass and it shall be known that the hand of the Lord is with his servants and his indignation is against his enemies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 66. Let us read it responsibly by half verse. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Sing the glory of his name. Sing the glory of his praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down before you. Sings to you, sings out your name. Come now and see the works of God. How wonderful he is in his doing toward all people. He turned the sea into dry land so that they went through the water on foot. And there we rejoiced in him. In his might he rules forever. His eyes keep watch over the nations. Let no rebel rise up against him. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard. Who holds who holds the psalm? There we go. Who holds our souls in life? The second reading is a reading from Galatians. My friends, if anyone is detected in transgression, you who have received the spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are holding nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work, that that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Now, do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life 
from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand? It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that they try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them and mercy upon the Israel of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals. Greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person but if not, it will return to you. 
remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. and Whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. Jesus said to them, I want Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. The sermon for this week has its roots in the gospel lesson for last week, so this is going to require you to have to remember stuff from last week. Do you remember in the lesson last week, Jesus was talking about, it was understanding that this was towards the end of his earthly ministry, and he set his face, do you remember the rest of it? Toward Jerusalem. A very unusual but very distinctive kind of thing he said, that, he, or that happened to him, he set his face toward Jerusalem. Which to my way of thinking is kind of a poetic, but a very visceral, poetic way of saying he was absolutely focused on going to Jerusalem. He knew what was going to be happening there. He knew that most of his earthly ministry was over. Setting his face towards Jerusalem is where he was going to go. And all of the events of Holy Week, the arrest, the crucifixion, his death on the cross, all of this, Jesus understood. And still, his face was set toward Jerusalem. That was last week. Does anybody remember that? Just go ahead and nod. Okay, you don't have to mean it, just nod. <laughs> You're all sinners. <laughs> okay, so we pick up the lesson in the gospel reading for today when Jesus sends out 70 others who are going to be going on ahead of him to every town and place where he himself was going to go. Now, I was having trouble trying to understand what this all meant. I mean, I, can, I know the words, I can figure out what they're saying, but I'm trying to put it into a language that I would understand for me. So this is the done translation of what Luke should have said if he had known what it was like to live in Colorado. Jesus was in Alamosa, but he set his face toward Denver. Are you with me so far? Okay. And he appointed these 70 people, 35 pairs, to go before him to every town and village where he himself was going to go. So he had the 35 pairs signed up, and I don't, I don't know who they chose, who got to go with who, but to the first couple he said, you all go to Moscow. You two, I want you to go to Hooper. You two, go to Moffat. Another two, you have to go over to Sawatch, even though it's a little bit out of the way. A couple more, you have to go to Crestone, which isn't on the way to anywhere. And then up to Villa Grove, I need two volunteers for Villa Grove. Over the pass, a couple people for Poncha Springs, and then a couple for Salida, and a couple for Buena Vista, and then up Highway 85, 
because that's the road I'm going to be taking because I have my face set toward Jerusalem. Is that all making sense? Jesus was saying to those 70 people going out, keep it simple. Go to a house in this place where I'm sending you. <laughs> Whoever drew, uh, fair play. God bless you. <laughs> but as you get into town that way, find that house where you're going to say peace to this house. If somebody of peace is there, they'll welcome you. Eat what they give you. Don't fuss about it. Don't move from house to house looking for a place that's got a better, more comfortable bed or that's going to put out nicer food for you. Just stay there and do these things. Cure those who are sick and tell them all, anyone who will listen, the kingdom of God has, has come near you. And this is the message that I've got. Now go. So the question I had as I was thinking about this this week and I've never heard anybody consider this before, and I didn't pick it up on Lutheran Hour this morning, which is usually where I get my good stuff. <laughs> Why do we do that? That's a rhetorical question, which means don't answer it out loud, Kimberly. Because <laughs> I know you would. You would answer this out loud. But why did Jesus do that? Think about it in your heads for a while. If he's got his heart set on going to Jerusalem, his face is set toward Jerusalem, why doesn't he just go to Jerusalem? Why is he stopping in all of these different places, 35 different places, on his way towards Jerusalem or Denver? Why is he doing that? And, and I've got a couple of answers. And I do not have a monopoly on everything that's holy, although many of you think that I do. But if you come up with a different answer, too, I'd like to hear it. That's a rhetorical question also. What? No, don't say it. But tell me later. Like, write it down or something. <laughs> the, the two answers that I have, that Jesus sent the pairs out to all of these different places because they were his people. For three years, he had been with them, and he loved them. And he had played with them, and he had cried with them, and he had worked with them, and he'd gotten frustrated with them. And he cared for them like nobody could ever care for anybody else. And he wanted to see them one more time. And I, I got this probably a, a not very religious idea in my head that somebody among the 12, probably Judas, came up with the idea of having t-shirts made that said, Jesus, the farewell tour. And then it was going to say Mosca and Hooper and Moffat and Crestone and Sawatch and all of the rest on his way back to Jerusalem. And, and he's thinking, if I make $3 per t-shirt on this thing, we're going to be able to get a lot. But from Jesus' point of view, these are his folks. These are the people that he loves the most. And he wants to see them. And, and then this thought occurred to me, that he was preparing for what was going to happen after the resurrection. He was preparing for the establishment of the church of Jesus Christ. And by being with these people, in relationship with these people, when the time came that Jesus died in Jerusalem, outside of Jerusalem, the word would get back to all of these people about the resurrection and about the joy of Jesus' presence with them again. And these folks would say, we get it, because we know that guy. And we love him. And that would be a kickstart to the beginning of the Episcopal, of the Episcopal Church, of the Church of Jesus Christ in the world. And then I was thinking, this is another rhetorical question, isn't the ministry that he gave to those 70 the same ministry that he gives to us today? To go out wherever it is that we're going, we're going to be able to go to a whole bunch more than 35 places today. But we go out to the places where we go and prepare the way for Jesus Christ by healing those who are around us and by announcing the words that they were told to announce, the kingdom of God, my friends, my family, my neighbors, whoever's going to listen, the kingdom of God is near you. And I was thinking about, you can go ahead and look at the front cover of the bulletin if you want, because it's got our mission statement there that we seek to be the heart and the hands of Christ 
in our community, and in the world. In other words, we are being Jesus for this world. And when people are in need of healing, we're here to help them heal. I know that so many of you, your prayer life has been enhanced since COVID because we've had so many times and so many reasons why we've had to pray for each other, and we do. The healing that we offer others and, and, then, and pray for for ourselves and the, the desire that we have to welcome people into that relationship with us too as we pray for healing for them. Sometimes it's the physical healing that we have to offer. Sometimes it's the healing of memories. And I know that some of you have some memories in your life that probably still need to be healed. And maybe some memories in your life that you say those were healed a long time ago. Thank you, Lord. The healing of relationships that we have, and we think about whatever relationships we may have that might be at odds with each other right now, and Jesus is saying, let me help you with that. That's a relationship that needs to be healed also. And we're being given that same commission that those 70 were given, go out and keep it simple, folks. Take care of those who are sick around you. Tell them that the kingdom of God has come near you. And if you do those things, that's what I've got to ask you. Now there's kind of a, I think, a humorous thing towards the end of the gospel reading for today. And the 70 come back from the towns that they had to go, and they're probably comparing notes. How was Conifer? <laughs> or how was Bailey? Woo! Boy, did I get the lucky one on that one. And, and Jesus is saying, they come back saying, even the spirits were submitted to us. And Jesus is saying, hush up, boys. Because it was probably all boys. The girls wouldn't have done that. But he said, yes, the demons are going to be submitting to you. Yes, you're going to be able to heal people. Yes, you're going to be operating in my name. Because I've given you the power to do that. But don't rejoice over those simple things. Rejoice that your names are written in the book of life. Remember that your name is in the book of the kingdom of God. In other words, Jesus is saying to them, all of those things, all of our ministries are all well and good. That we're on God's team, that's what matters most. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. comes by, would you put that in it? <laughs> I lost it. I said, when the plate comes by, put that in it, because I just lost a bet with myself. <laughs> Y'all are going to have to go to Conifer. <laughs> I invite you to stand as you're able and let us offer our words of faith as it's expressed in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let life perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Kathy, Marcia, Michelle, Harry, Jill, Barb, Daryl, Sheila, David, Cece, Joni, Shane, Susan, Jane, Jack, Barb, Patty, Margaret, Jean, George, Neil, Pat, Susan, Emily, Frank, Nadine, Julie, Wendell, Ellie, Bobby, and for the repose of the soul of Mel, go forth. Are there others? Please be seated as we welcome those forward who are celebrating birthdays this week. Anybody celebrating a birthday this week? Oh, okay. For Betty, for Rob, when's your birthday day? Okay, okay. And Bill's birthday is today. Happy's birthday is tomorrow. Celestina? July 9th. July 9th. All right. Do we have Hipster? Patrick? Okay. Any others on Zoom joining us that are having birthdays? Is anybody counting back nine months to guess what was going on? <laughs> For all of our birthday kids, let us offer the birthday prayer. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Patrick, God bless you. <laughs> Anybody celebrating an anniversary this week? You know this woman? All right. Rob and Joy. 
Anniversary day is coming up when? This Tuesday. Okay. Would you please join with me in the anniversary prayer? Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and the church. Send forth your blessing upon these your servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Happy anniversary. How many years of wedded bliss? <laughs> a lot. God bless you. God bless Rob and Joy. And now, think about those sad things that you've done. I invite you to stand for the confession. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. If you haven't done any recently, just think about the person sitting next to you. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. find down there? Is that a mouse? Did you find a mouse? Oh, okay. Peace be with you. God's peace. God's peace. Peace. Dynamite. God's peace. Jan and I attended a funeral up in Loveland on Friday, and I was invited and blessed to be able to preach for that service. I mentioned this during the preaching, that the holiest among the people in the congregation were looking at me this way, and the unholy ones were looking down and noticing that I was wearing sneakers. <laughs> I want you to know I have on not only sneakers, but shorts. This is, this is summertime in Colorado, folks, and if you want to wear shorts to church, you're welcome to do that, even if your knees look like mine. 
couple of announcements. There are many in the bulletin, and I invite you to take those home and read them. This is in the bulletin, but you may not have heard this last week. For the free neighborhood cleanup days, please pick up one of these hangers. I don't know if you put it over the mirror in your car or even leave it hanging in the cabin, but this will allow you to clean up dumpsters in the parking lot. Drop off all sorts of stuff in the back here, but not drop off a bunch of other stuff that's living around the park. So please take one of these home. on? Sweet. There have been several opportunities that have come across my mailbox. Don't know why, but there they are. Um, senior wardens get all the other stuff. Anyway, um, how many of you like soccer? Soccer. Professional soccer. Some people call it football. Anyway, on uh, August 20th, Saturday, uh, the Colorado Rapids are going to be playing against Houston Dynamo. Um, and it's Coke Fan Pack Night. You get a drink, a meal, and a ticket to the game. Uh, it's worth $15 at the concessions. If you want to sit on the corner, it's 32 bucks. If you want to sit on the east sideline, it's $39. If you want to sit on the west side that's in the shade, it's $50. It's a weekend game, and it's back to school fireworks show. So if you don't get enough fireworks in your neighborhoods or wherever you live, I know they're around me, um, there's that coming up. It's, it's open to all of the churches and the um, synagogues in the Denver metro area. Didn't know if anybody was interested. Is there anybody interested in that? Sort of, kind of, maybe. Okay, come see me after church, but fast, because we've got a gathering at our house at noon. Also, um, wait, there's another one. Oh yeah, the spring capital campaign is still going on. We'd love your money. And uh, St. Paul's Episcopal Church is in Central City, and they are having their 27th annual Day at the Opera fundraiser. So if you don't want to support St. Stephen's, <laughs> but would like to support St. Paul's, and I'm sure they do good things up there, uh, they're having a not inexpensive, but fun Eucharist at 10 on July 31st. Then there's lunch at noon, and the opera's at 2.30. Um, you can go for uh, $35 tickets, up to $105 tickets. This is gonna be on the bulletin board next to the elevator. If you're interested in it, just write your name on here and I'll make sure you get a copy of the um, order form. Which opera? Which opera? Die Fledermaus. Do you wanna know what Die Fledermaus is about? They told me. No. Okay, never mind. <laughs> it's funny. We like a funny opera. Anyway, um, again, if you haven't had an opportunity to contribute to our spring capital campaign, the flooring is calling to you. If you listen, you can hear it. It sounds like this. 
as people trip over the flooring in the sacristy. We don't want them to do that. We don't have that many people in our altar guild. Also, if you'd like to be on the altar guild, that'd be great. Talk to the lady yaying. That's Ruth LaFrance. You should talk to her anyway. She's fun to talk to. Okay, that's all. Thank you.
students with Eucharistic Prayer C. And I remind everybody that this is God's table and God prepares a place for everyone. So wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you're welcome to either stand or kneel here at the altar rail or ask an usher and we'll be happy to bring communion to you in the pew. But all people are welcome to receive God's food from God's table for God's people. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. And, and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Mm -hmm. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his crown. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob, Rachel, and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength for pardon only, and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. As our 
Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread, the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith.
visitors that are going out today to our church meets. Then let us continue with our Thanksgiving prayer after communion. You're welcome to stand or kneel as you wish. And together let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted 